Hi all, I'm Rocky Bhatia and welcome to my channel. Today we will learn about Docker and containers. Container is one of the finest technology that came into picture and is ruling the world in multiple ways. Containers have become the fundamental part of any modern software development and deployment. Containers are now no longer restricted to microservices domain. They are into data engineering, data science, full stack development, web application, and many more areas. Therefore, the understanding of containers are very much important to grow in this field. In this video, we will learn about why do we need container? What is the critical problem they have solved? What are containers? What is the difference between container and virtualization? Why containers have become so much popular? What is Docker? How it is different from container? What are the core components of Docker? Docker architecture? And how to build a very simple application with the help of Docker? So let us get started. First thing first, why do we need containers? There is a very famous quotation in our software world. It runs on my machine. It refers to a situation when an application is working fine on developer's computer during the development phase. But when it was tested on a different environment, staging, testing or deployment, it didn't work due to inconsistencies of the different environment. So this is a problem we all have faced that due to different environment, our application didn't work. So let us try to understand more into this area. Let's say we have to develop a simple web application. For developing a web application, we need web application framework, we need one database, we need UI layer, at least these components are very much required. Let's say we go with a very popular MERN stack. MERN stands for MongoDB, which is a very powerful NoSQL database. E stands for Express.js, which is a very popular web application framework based on Node.js. R, React.js, one of the coolest JavaScript library to build very cool and intuitive UIs and Node.js which is a runtime environment for running JavaScript on the server side. So let us say we have to develop this application. Now to develop this application, first thing would be we might have to include certain libraries and dependencies to start with. So once we have started development, now we need some environment where we are going to test that one. Let's say we have set up that environment either in a local computer or in any virtual machine. For that one, we would have to install MongoDB. We would have to install Node.js. We would have to configure NPM. Then we would have to install Express.js and other components. Since we have developed this application, now it's time to test the application. So we had created a setup, whatever the required binaries and different things were required, we had installed it. And we tested it, it is working fine. We are good to go. But the moment that we had given to the testing team to test it, it failed. There could be multiple reasons. Maybe the Node.js version that we installed is different from the version they have in their setup. The libraries or the package that we have in us code, it's not compatible with the setup they have. Maybe they have a different React.js version. So there could be multiple reasons. This is a very common problem where if we have to test application between two different environments, which are not identical, we may face this problem very frequently. And it's a very common problem. This is where the containers comes into picture. Containers are the magic box that holds everything your application needs. Be it your application code, libraries, packages, binaries, configuration, whatever is required to run in any environment. What is container? So by definition, container is a lightweight, flexible, executable package that is everything related to your code, libraries, packages, binaries, configuration to run your code in any environment. Let us also try to understand container with the help of real world example. Let's say we have to go for a trip. For a trip, we need clothes, we need shoes, medicines, books, and many other stuff. What we do, we bundle all of this stuff together in the form of luggage. And we carry that luggage, and whatever is required, everything is in that luggage. Now, we are able to solve the biggest problem in terms of code, test, and deploy, where due to the inconsistencies between the environment of packages, dependencies, or other libraries, our applications are not able to run. With the help of container, now we can run this application anywhere in any environment. So this was the basic motivation why do we need container and what are containers. Now let us move to the next topic where we will try to understand the difference between container and virtualization. Now let's try to understand the difference between container and virtualization. First, let's talk about virtualization. All the cloud computing is based on this virtualization principle where a single physical hardware has been divided into small small virtual machines. For example, let's say someone has purchased a physical server where 10,000 cores are there and 5,000 GB RAM is there. Now, what we want is we want to divide this hardware into small small chunks so that multiple users could use it. So we have divided that hardware into multiple 
different different virtual machines so that different different users could use it. This is at high level virtualization. Now how it works? There is a software which basically facilitate this arrangement where you 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 can divide your one physical machine into different different virtual machine. How it works? So we have a infrastructure in the form of physical hardware. Now this is hypervisor. Hypervisor is a component which manages the virtual machine, their creation, their uh, resource management, and everything is part of this hypervisor. So hypervisor is a software or a hardware layer which takes care of the virtualization of different different machines. Now hypervisor could be of two types: hypervisor one and hypervisor two. In this figure, this is hypervisor one, which is a bare metal. In this case, it does not need any operating system on top of any physical machine, so it takes care of all the resource management with respect to these many machines. Similarly, we have hypervisor two, where that needs a OS layer. So first, the operating first the physical machine is there. On top of that, we install operating system, and then a hypervisor in the form of software it comes. For example, we have used a virtual box or VMware workstation. Those are hypervisor two, and VMware vSphere is hypervisor one. In this example, this is hypervisor one. Now, if you see, first we have hardware, then we have hypervisor layer, and then we have guest OS, and there is also a concept of host OS. If we have host OS, like in the form of hypervisor two, where we needed OS, so when there is a physical machine and you install an operating system on top of that, you call that operating system as a host because this is a host machine. And when you create different virtual machines with the help of hypervisor, and when you, then you install different different operating system, you call them guest OS. We create virtual machines, so we have virtual machines. We can install any so any. Um, operating system like Windows, Unix. So that that is our guest OS. On top of that, we have hypervisor infrastructure layer, and then we can run. You know, we can have let's say we have installed a Unix, and then we can install JD, JDKs, and then Java application. Similarly, we can run Node.js, and then run the Node.js application. But in case of containers, so we have infrastructure, we have this physical server, and then we have an operating system. Let's say we have installed Unix, and we would have a container engine. We'll talk about container engine. Let's say Docker is there. And then we can run different different applications. Now, how it is different? If you see why it has gained so much popularity, first, in this case, we needed different different operating system on top of this hypervisor, and then we could run our application. But in case of container, we are using the same operating system, and this same operating system is utilized by different different applications. This is very light, and it uses very less resources as compared to this one this is heavy because here we have to install the operating system and booting process will also be very slow relative to this one so this is the core difference between container and virtualization i'm just summarizing in virtualization we have different different virtual machines where we have a separate os is required to run an application here the common os is being used across the application virtualization here is happening between the different different application layers in the form of different processes here the virtualization is happening between the different different machines so you need a hypervisor and hypervisor is of two types and which takes care of all the requirement related to virtual machine this is very heavy in terms of resources and takes a lot of time to boot and this is light because it uses a common os now let us try to understand our next component which is docker now what is docker docker is one of the most popular platform to manage a containerization similarly other platforms are also there so we shouldn't get confused with docker with container container is a technology and docker is a platform and docker has its ecosystem which manages a different life cycle of a container now there are many components of the docker let us try to understand these components with the help of a real world example let's say we have to build a house now when we build a house the very first step is to create a blueprints blueprints having the details like how many rooms would be there what would be the size of that room how a layout layout would look like so you could you could think that this image is just like that blueprint for our application when we build a house we set up a strong foundation for setting up a strong foundation with this image we need a operating system why do we need a operating system let's say we want to run a simple java application so you cannot run a java application without any operating system So that means we need a operating system first, and then on top of that we could install libraries or we could, you know, add dependencies. But first, the base at the base we need a operating system. We created a foundation layer in the form of an operating system. Now, when we build a house, we need different materials also. Like we need bricks, we need cement, we need wood, and other 
you know other things you know when we run application so we need code we need libraries and we need dependency so we set the foundation of our operating system and on top of that layer by layer we will add code we will add dependencies we will add libraries so images works on a different layering system this is how we we'll keep on adding and when we are building the house so who does the construction workers does the construction so here the worker role is being played by this container so we need a construction manager also that could take care of all the construction all the communication they could take care of the worker but they are doing so that role is being played by this docker engine where with respect to communication the cli is there docker daemon is there which is responsible for the container management and everything now we know about the different components of docker let us try to understand the architecture of docker so docker architecture is very simple first of all it follows a client server model so we have client we have docker host we have registry and other components that we have already discussed now the flow starts from cli this is the first entry point or a, this is the first point where a user interacts with docker and through cli you know we we fire different different commands building the docker running the containers or pulling the images everything related to this one is being done through cli so whenever we run any command through cli docker daemon which is a core component of a docker engine it's a background process that keeps running all the time it picks all the commands from cli and process them so it manages you know the images the container the complete life cycle of a container this is a component that manages that one and docker host is a machine or a virtual machine where you know we have this environment where we bring up the container where we create a container everything so that is our docker host machine and then we have a registry registry you can treat it like it's a collection of uh, like it's a library where a lot of images are there a lot of pre built images are there so docker hub is very well known registry which has a lot of images which have already been pre built and we could reuse them so suppose we needed a linux based distribution windows based distribution we wanted a no sql database we wanted a node js environment jdk anything so all this you know images are already there we could use that image and then we could you know customize that image and then again we could push that image for a later use let us try to understand with the help of example how it works we created you know in the beginning we started with one base application now let's say we again want to do with the help of this docker how we could do so first we know that it starts from a docker file a docker file is a you know a docker file is a file where we write all the commands and steps which are required to build the image now first we could do is we need a operating system so maybe we could use docker pull command docker pull command first it will check that whether a linux based distribution is already present in your local machine where this docker environment is there if it is there then it will pull that image if it is not there it will go back to the registry if you have already registered it will pull that image and then on top of that maybe you can do some configuration you can install some libraries you can install the dependency and then you can commit that image again with the help of docker push so that again you can later use it now you had a docker file where you had you know base image and then you also wanted some application code your configuration file to be copied into the environment and copied to that image so that container could use it so we would supply everything in that docker file and then with the help of docker build command it will create a image from the docker file and now since we have a image which has everything with the help of docker run command we could run a container so container we know which is a running instance of the image and then docker push as we have already discussed that if we have some images we could push that image as per need to registry so this is how it works so let us try to understand the working of a docker with a very simple example let's say we want to just create one java application we want to run that java application in a container so for that for what are the steps that we have to follow we have created a java application it's a very simple application we are just printing hello docker from java we have compiled the application and this hello world dot class has been generated we have already discussed the very first step start from the docker file what we are doing what we are doing is so we have created a docker file in that docker file for running a java application we need we need a you know jdk environment where we could run the java application so we have picked the open jdk environment it may happen that this jdk image or the image that we are you know picking or the image that we are picking here it could come from directly from the local system or it may come from the uh, you know docker registry if that particular image is not available there so as a next step what we are doing is the compiled java class that we had we are copying into the container you know in some directory and then we we are copying it here and now changing the location of the directory also and finally we have this command that how to run this java program don't worry about the syntax of the docker file just follow the commands the steps that we are doing right now and once we have done this docker file now we are again running a docker command to build this one so we have we have run this command docker build so with this it will create a image 
and that we would have JDK environment, we would have a code that maybe we can push to the local repo or we could also push to the Docker one. So here we are just pushing to the local repo. Now once the image has been built, the next part is we have to run the container. That was the main thing, right? So using this command, we'll run the container. So once we'll run the container, and once this container will come up and then we'll be able to see the output hello docker from the java by pressing the control c we could stop the container this was a working example and this was a very basic example that we understood how we can create an application through docker and how we can run it and then the application could be you know as complex as we want and as simple as we want so this is the working of a docker so in this video we learned about different concept of containers and dockers I'm sure this video will definitely help you to build a strong foundation in containers and dockers. Now in future videos, we will go more details in working with a docker by doing some hands-on. Thank you so much for listening to me. I'm signing off. See you in the next video.